Excellent. So our final speaker for this afternoon is the fantastic John Crawley, um, who, as we have previously mentioned in today's session, is going to give us the Irish perspective with regards to trust. Now, John, if you've got some slides, do you want to hit share now? I know that you are a true expert when it comes to all things Zoom, so I will let you click the buttons and then pass across to your wonderful self. Yeah, excellent. It's almost doing it. It'll get there soon enough. There we go. Perfect. Everybody, I give you John Crawley. Fantastic. Hello, folks, and you're very welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me into your space. I've been listening in on and off over the last hour and I think I follow some of the words. Certainly, I, I get some of them. I heard of the word battery and I heard of the word some of these things before, so I'm getting it. I'm an accountant, okay? I'm a risk professional. Um, I'm a master trainer of some sort. And, um, and I like to have a bit of fun doing presentations. So we started, as I always do, any presentation I do with a little bit of music. So you were listening to a Northern Ireland gentleman called Phil Coulter. Okay, who wrote a song called Ireland's Call. And I'm using that as my back, backdrop to actually introduce my session today because my session is build trust and Irish political perspective. So the one thing I will not be talking about is anything geological, but geographical I will do. Okay, so there's a bit of geo in me, okay, which I will, I, I will get to. Phil Coulter wrote a song a number of years ago uh, I live on an island with two countries, Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, and the, and, the, and the Republic of Ireland. And we have an All-Ireland rugby team. We're not bad, actually. We've beaten the All Blacks a couple of times, okay? So, 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 uh, so, kudos, uh, so kudos to the boys. But the dilemma arose as to what, nat what national anthem would we play at games? Could we, would, we, would we play as, 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 you know, God Save the King Struck Queen? Would we play the Irish national anthem? What would we do? So in the spirit, I suppose, of community, in the spirit of hands across the border, probably in the spirit of trust, and this is this is built upon sort of years that started, which we look at on an earlier slide, built on a, on a common shared platform of trust. We actually created an anthem, Ireland's Call, okay, which you'll hear rallied out at rugby matches. So the next time you're in Twickenham, okay, or the next time you're in Stade de France, or the next time you're somewhere where the Irish are tranching the British, the, 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 the England or Wales or Scotland, or being tranched by. Listen out for that song, Ireland's Call, Phil Coulter. Okay, what's that got to do with what I'm going to talk about? Okay, it's just a small little background to it. Let me set my little uh, foray into the world of trust into some sort of context uh, for you. So uh, somewhere in the in the dim distant uh, past over a cup of coffee or, or possibly a glass of wine, Sarah and I, have had many rambling conversations about different uh, different things, and in one of those uh, those conversations, I regaled uh, stories that I would have had myself from a very limited, but at the same time, participative role in what was what we now know as the as the the, the Good Friday Agreement or the Nor the Northern Ireland uh, the Northern Ireland or Belfast Agreement, um, and and. Uh, Sarah prompted me uh, to talk about this uh, today in the context of did trust play a role in that? Okay, or did politics play a role? Did commerce play a role? And I, I started scratching my head and thinking about it and kicked it around, okay, with a couple of my colleagues uh, for a while and thought, actually, do you know what? It is actually the bedrock of it. So let me set it into some sort of context for you. So Northern Ireland, so I'm limiting myself to what we call in Ireland the Troubles. Okay, so if you hear Irish people talking about this, and if you hear about it, and you'll see a clip from, or you'll see a screenshot from Dairy Girls coming up in a short while, they will talk about the Troubles, okay? And what are the Troubles? Well, the Troubles basically started in Northern Ireland in, in, uh, in, 19, in 1979. The stark numbers in brackets, just as I talk through the timeline, is the death rate associated with violence in Northern Ireland over a period of time. So 1968, it kicked, it kicked off with civil rights marches and 16 people lost their lives in that period of time. People started to scramble around to say, how do we solve this problem? And to be fair 
politicians got involved at an early stage and the British government uh, of the day in the mid-1970s brought a number of people together in Sunningdale and created what we became known as the Sunningdale Agreement, Okay, where the death toll at this stage had risen up to 942, uh, 942 people. And it was about trying to sort of see, can we get some sort of solution to the sectarianism and, 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 and the issues associated with that? It fell over. Okay, it fell over after a couple of months. Um, 1981, time moving along, debt toll up to 2,291. Margaret Thatcher, Prime Minister at the time, a uh, Republican, IRA Republican prisoner, uh, Bobby Sands, uh, incarcerated in jail for presumably terrorism activities and probably rightly so as a result of that ran for election and stood as an MP, okay, in Northern Ireland and was elected uh, to, to Commons, uh, died on hunger strike in, 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 in jail. And it became a little bit of a turning point because all of a sudden the world was starting to say, what is going on in Ireland? And are these guys ever going to do anything about this? Out of the shadows came John Hume, okay, the then leader of the of the SDLB party in 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 Northern Ireland. Sadly, passed away a couple of years ago. Death toll now two thousand eight hundred and seventy four, nineteen eighty eight. Started to talk to the IRA. That wasn't a particularly popular thing to do at the time. These were extreme terrorists, and they were up there with, you know, the the modern day equivalent of the Al Qaeda, okay, and and yet talk to them he, he he did he very quickly enlisted the help of of the then president in the u.s bill clinton who has become instrumental okay in 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 not only building the peace but in maintaining it over a period of time bill came on board okay in northern ireland uh, in 1995 death toll now 3376 dead human beings as a result of mindless violence due to terrorism. Over the short number of years that followed, okay, we, we eventually hacked out what has become known lovingly as the Belfast Agreement or the Good Friday Agreement. And the clock pretty much from a death toll point of view peaked and effectively stopped at that stage at just slightly short of 3,500. We celebrate 25 years on this, uh, this uh, last month and this, and, and, and this year. And yes, deaths have continued in Northern Ireland through violence, as they have proportionately in Liverpool, okay, or in Dundee, or in Melbourne, okay. And I don't mean to call it normal violence, but you know, it is slightly more normalized, okay. So that was the backdrop. So so what 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 were the components, okay? And I love playing with I love playing with words, okay, and 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 when I started to play with the trust word, the following words came into my head. Terrorism, obviously the problem, the root cause. In, in, you know, entrenched with republicanism, very much on the nationalist side, and but unionism, okay, and and terrorism on the, on that side, and ultimately, I suppose, just general sectarianism, and yet there was always a hankering, okay, in all of this to see, is there some class of treaty, is there some class of settlement, is there something that can be done about all uh, about all of this, and actually, the quiet spoken voice that probably brought a lot of this to its senses were the good ladies of Northern Ireland on all sides who actually said, and they formed effectively a women's coalition. Okay, enough is enough. Guys, put the guns away, let's start talking. And it became, I suppose, the germ of the idea of a treaty of some sort. So enter the players onto the stage and some of some of these players would have actually had frames around their fa their faces their faces in previous times okay not good frames they could have been standing in police stations okay you know as most wanted etc so from the likes of martin mcginnis now now passed away to jerry adams both leaders of effectively Sinn fein ira on the on the left hand side of the, the slide to david irvine okay a leader of, of of a unionist paramilitary organization to david trimble okay a leader okay of 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 a legitimate unionist organization and then to john hume the guy i talked about earlier on in the center who effectively acted as the broker the other important players that that really underpinned the trust in all of this the very outspoken but loving and caring mo molan the then secretary for state for for, for northern ireland 
who didn't call you know a thing that that sat on the side of the of the, of, of of a farmyard an agricultural instrument she called a spade a spade she was well able to call it out for what it was okay and and harangued and and dragged the various different players together to say we need to talk this brilliant imagery of her going around in northern ireland at the moment okay of of 1998 and 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 getting the, the parties around the table and her running from one room to the other okay as 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 she was as she had her chemo drip following her round okay you know um and and had dispensed you know with the wig that she was wearing okay and and in her trackies just saying for god's sake lads are we going to do this thing or are we or are, are, are we not to the leaders and the brokers and, and and effectively the guarantors okay the the prime minister in the uk and the prime minister in northern ireland underpinned by George Mitchell, the, spe the special envoy from, from, from Bill Clinton. And I guess those guys all together, politicians, democratically elected people, terrorists, all around a table or a series of tables saying, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be something we've got to do here. And what was common okay, to, the, to every participant's role okay, in this? they started to trust each other. They had no rational basis for doing it. And yet they did. Okay, they built upon that. Yes, we had upsets, of course. You know, 1998, okay, was, was part of a journey. And, you know, if you ever get the, the, the pleasure of traveling around Derry or, or, or Belfast in particular, you know, you'd be impressed by the murals that you'll see on walls and go on some of the tours. You know, and this image of prepared for prepared for peace, ready for war, epitomized the fragility of that trust, and yet it endured. Okay. Um now, once we got the deal done, we had to sell the idea. So people like Bono from U2 came center stage and says, Look, we, you know, will start okay, popularizing okay, this this deal that's been put together because we need to build upon this trust. We want this thing to work. OK, we need to un trust needs to be underpinned with public opinion. It needs to be underpinned with public support and you need to be bring people in. It needs to be recognized internationally. It became recognized, you know, John Hume and David Trimble receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. OK, for it. And that gave it very strong stature that gave it very strong recognition. You know, we created a new world order, absolute arch enemies, Ian Paisley okay, and, and Martin McGuinness effectively became known lovingly as the Chuckle Brothers. OK, where they shared power together as the first and the deputy first minister of Northern Ireland. They started to build upon that trust and say, actually, we've got to lock, our, lock arms and lock hands to do it. And Eileen Foster, Ar Arlene Foster and Michelle O'Neill in more recent years, and I know the assembly has broken down, but it's broken down the same way that parliaments break down all over the world. But yet the trust remains that we're trying to find a way to do this. Now. There was also a realization, and this is where I played a tiny role. Okay, there was also a realization that you know if we hang up or we de decommission our arms and our balaclavas, okay, and our grenades, we still have the same people in Northern Ireland, but we've got to do things in new ways. And fundamentally, if you think about it from a commerce point of view, the 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 the, the terrorist organizations winding themselves up effectively had to execute excuse the pun, okay, they effectively had to deliver a huge redundancy campaign. They had to make loads of terrorists unemployed because there was no longer money to be made out of that, okay, because that was the day job that was discontinued. And we had to figure out a way to rehabilitate those. And I was working in a bank in Northern Ireland at the time, and one of our roles was to say, hang on, we need to trust these people to lend them money to set up new businesses for themselves, etc. So, you know, we had to find alternative things for people to do, okay, that previously were involved in this in this in, in this world. So it was just it was just another step, it was just another lever, it was just another thing we had to do to make sure that the trust operated. And of course, we, we continue to celebrate it. And it's really important that we see we've seen this in South Africa and we've seen it in other parts of the world where we have truth commissions and we have reflective things that go on. And I mean, if you're if you're looking for a good reflective piece on this, look at the last episode that was filmed of Derry Girls, because it's all fundamentally about the building of that trust that underpinned the Belfast Agreement, the Good Friday Agreement, but done in a very sensitive way through the lens 
of teenagers, okay, and the different and the different roles that they had to play uh, in all of that. To me, a very good test of that trust, okay, how does trust endure? So Brexit was and is a challenge, okay, and and you know the Irish border issue and the Irish Sea issue has become very much centre stage of exit agreements and uh, and everything associated with that. And I'm not going to wander into Brexit, okay, because I'm almost about to wrap up, Sarah, okay, but you know. Everybody put their shoulders to the wheel to say there is a Good Friday agreement. There is a trust agreement that's there. We must respect it. OK, but yet, you know, and, and they did. And, and, and they had to and they had to figure out some harrowing days of will we go back to some of the old days if this Brexit thing doesn't work right? And to be fair to all of the parties, there was never even practically speaking on the ground a hint of the breakdown of that fundamental trust that was signed up to on Good Friday of 1998. So of course we continue to celebrate it, you know, and, ev and everybody endures that. And, and of course we need to continue with it. And the Bill Clintons of this world are very good at that. And, and Hillary Clinton is still to this day, okay, you know, the chancellor of Queen's University in Belfast. That's the level of connection she has with it. But also, you know, the good people of Northern Ireland basking in the sunshine, okay, of what has been achieved, still continue to reflect on what was, a, in their view, for their small little part of the world, a seismic change, a seismic change built on trust. Trust to a level, okay, where terrorists that previously killed Lord Mountbatten, okay, were still, okay, able to shake the hands of the Queen or the Queen to shake their hands or to turn up at the, car the coronation okay, of King Charles III this week, coming from Republican or Unionist terrorism backgrounds. There was an acceptance back into the community that there was something that was built on trust that does endure. So to wrap up, why does trust work? Or why, why the trust worked in this scenario? There was a willingness of the parties. There was political endorsement or government endorsement. There was strong public commitment and that, that was hard won and the, the bonos of this world had to work hard on that. There was a realism that hurdles remained. And most importantly, we celebrated every little success. So there was truth, there was respect. We acted in unison. The self was also preserved and recognized because not everybody agreed and not everybody, you know, not everybody was brought on the journey, but the majority were. But what did we end up with? Trust. Thank you. John Crawley, you genius. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so, so much. Absolutely brilliant.